Uh oh. Pixie frog's awake. You know what that means? It means it's time for him to eat. Because when he's awake and he's standing up, he's hungry. Let's feed him. I think this is the first time I'm showing you guys my pixie frog. His name is John. He's a male pixie frog. He's still a baby. Um, no, he's about four months old, five months old. He's huge, uh, and he's hungry. So, you know what to do when, when reptiles are hungry, we feed them. So we're gonna throw in some food here, and once he sees stuff moving around a little bit, he's gonna go into hunting mode. Oh, yes. We're starting up good. We are starting up good. Oh! Mm -hmm. Super worm and dubia roach gone. Two at once. Two at once. Uh oh, there's a really baby roach. Must have been attached to someone. It never got to see the world. Now that's going to give him a, a second of... He's got to push those things down because he ate the two at one time. Got to get him positioned. Otherwise, let's get in here. See what we can see. Now pixie frogs, they have bones on the bottom of their mouth. Teeth. So you got to be careful because they can take your finger right off. Sometimes he gets bullied by the roaches. They burrow under him because they don't want to die. Oh, this could be good. Going for the kill. So, after he's had a few bites here, I want to go over his uh, his enclosure with you guys while he eats in the background. Because there's a lot of controversy going on about it. And um, it's a shame. Oh, so close. It's a, it's a shame and it's there's a lot of confusion and, and a lot of the videos you guys I, I see online are hey this is this is my enclosure and this is how I have it set up and hey this is my enclosure and this is how I have it set up but none of them are really hitting on why you should set it up like this or why they set their enclosure up like this or pluses and minuses you know the pros and cons of you set it up one way you set it up the other. What what do you have to do if it's this way or that way? Because th there are some options. So, option one. Do pixie frogs need water in the enclosure? The answer is kind of. Oh, bum, 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 bum. we start with controversy already. They need, when they are small, babies. You just bring it home. They need a water bowl because pixie frogs, they'll soak in the water and they absorb that water into them so they don't stay in the water. Um, that's how they drink. That's how they stay hydrated. It can help them shed a little bit. So smaller pixie frogs, their body is obviously smaller so they can store less water inside of them. So it's easier if you have some kind of water bowl in the enclosure. That way when your pixie frog needs to drink or needs to pee out all his bad water that he's got in him or needs to help shed, he can just go in there and do that. Now, the alternative is you have him in a, a muddy substrate. This is coconut fiber, you know, eco-earth, and it's, it's slightly damp, uh, not enough to squeeze and get water out of it. And then that you take him out daily and you soak him when he's a small baby. And that's the key, daily. Now the controversy about the water is sometimes pixie frogs can get infections and die because of the water in their enclosure because not only is this their sink, you know, and their drinking water and they're cleaning themselves water, this is also their bathroom. They're going to pee and poo right in the water. Um, and then they're going to go in there, they're going to soak, and then they're going to come out of the water, 
and they're going to bring you know their pee and possibly poo covered body into the enclosure where they sleep bacteria gets in all of this and then it kills them infection if you're going to have no water then you have to do the the for me when they're smaller is a pain in out of water in out of water in their cage now the alternative is you put the water in there but if you have water in there it has to be cleaned not just with a filter but you do need a filter and not just with dumping it out you've got to take it you've got to scrub uh, you know disinfect the, the container that it's in every once in a while and put it back in like you would with a fish like with water change so even if you have a filter even if you have a filter you still need to, to clean the perimeter every so often so if you don't have water you're gonna be doing this taking them in taking them out taking them in taking them out etc if you have water I like to have a moving water source with a filter if you have a filter that will aerate the water so what are all these bubbles and I just cleaned his water it's it's hooked up to an air tube the air tube comes down so it's aerating the water and then there's a heater to keep the water at a warm temp that way it's not ice cold he doesn't get shocked so even with all this I still have to regularly clean that filter when he comes in here to shed because he'll bring dirt in with him so typically in your enclosure you want to have if you have water you want to have some kind of uh, transition piece so here I have some rocks that he has to crawl over and if you see there's a ton of dirt and then I have to I have to empty this it's in a it's in a plastic container but there's just a ton of dirt in it because as he comes out of his spot he'll rub along here and any dirt he's got on him will get brushed off and then he'll go in the water he still brings dirt in with him and it still will slow down the filter and you got to get it cleaned out so that transition period all this this placement although it's not a must it, it's very important because it'll help with the maintenance of here. Also, when you see that he's come in and you know, use the restroom, he'll devastate this water. This water, I shut the filter off, I siphon out all of the water, clean the tank, clean the filter, clean the, the, the rocks he's got in there, put in new water. The water is also treated. Stuff you can treat your fish tank with. Um, just so all the hard chemicals, if you're putting tap water in here, if you're putting distilled water or reverse osmosis water, you don't need to treat it for the chemicals. Although most of it that you treat will have some aloe vera in there, which is really good for his skin. Um, help him if he's got any cuts or wounds. So it's all good. So if you're going to do the water, keep it clean. Regularly take it out. I like to keep it moving so it's not stagnant. It's aerated. It's temperature controlled. What do you need in terms of size? Because I see people also with these, these giant enclosures. And although that's kind of cool, it's a waste for a pixie frog. Why is it a waste? Because even in Africa, watch documentaries, things like that, they just chill. See that giant hole is? That's where he chills. And then there's one spot over here. That's where he chills. So when... You, and, and, and those are the only two places he ever chills. So typically, like with most reptiles, your, your dry land area, and, and it could be this whole thing, but let's pretend that I didn't even have the water here, so his, his enclosure stayed here. This is about as big as it would need to be then. It would only need to be this square, and, and he gets big. Why is that? Because he's just going to find a spot, and he's just going to sit there. Uh, this is his, And then he's going to find another spot, and he's going to sit there. But you need to have enough space and enough heat control for two spots. So that's his warm spot. There's a, a heating pad underneath. So this soil is warmer. And if he goes really digs down to the, the, the glass, it's, it can get quite, quite warm. And then up here, this is actually a little plastic landing that's built up underneath all this. This spot is cooler. So if he's cold, Boom. If he's hot, boom. That takes care of that. And that's the only dry space that you need. That's all they do. If you're going to have water, then you want to make sure that it's big enough for him to soak in. So he does soak in here. Another 
benefit of the water is typically if you have water in your enclosure the pixie frog will use the water to help shed they don't need to do this they have two ways they can shed they can shed on the dry land which will because if you have the dry land keep in mind you know you still have humidity in the tank if I ever get low I've got a fogger that's hooked up can pump some humidity typically to where he sits and you still muddy and you still soak him right but those a dry land shed which the pixie frog will use his tongue he'll use the mud and he'll get his shed off and then he actually typically will eat his shed as part of the shed to get all his nutrients in if you see that happening it can be a sign of two well one big thing pixie frogs who are eating their shed typically feel that they're under nutrient so like they they don't feel they feel like they're they're missing there's some off balance so they're going to eat that to try to save some nutrients to preserve them much like leopard geckos do that's not bad for them although it can be a warning to you that hey maybe i need to apply more powder or maybe i need to change up his diet so he can get more protein things like that one of the problems this can lead into is impaction, though. Because if they're eating it in their dry enclosure, which is still, remember, damp, and it's just, it's just not water, they can eat sometimes a lot of their substrate, which then will give them impaction, and then it could lead to them dying. So you've got to be careful. If you have water, the pixie frog, and he's got a great diet, like my pixie frog, only will shed in the water whether it's in here or it's when I soak them outside of the tub it's a lot easier for him to shed in here because if you think about it it's not coming off like dry skin so the water will help let the, the skin kind of peel all away all slimy he can get it out of his eyes he can get it off of everything uh, and he doesn't eat it there's no worry for impaction although if he did eat it it would be nice and clean now if you think about it, even as he's larger, that's just like a giant piece of goo. You could even look at like maybe a, a plastic wrap. Where does it go? Right into the filter. So although the water will look clear, I constantly walk by, you know, I, I interact with him every day and see, does he have any shed that's stuck that might be slowing down the filter? Another good sign is if water flow slows down, you won't see as much air because it won't be moving as quickly. And that's how I know, hey, this filter needs to be cleaned even though it looks clear. Maybe it's got a lot of dirt. Maybe it's got a lot of stuck shed in there. Or not stuck shed, but just a lot of old shed. Time to clean the filter itself, which I clean about every three days anyways. The other nice part, if you're going to do a filter, I really recommend a filter that lets its water out underwater. My frog, at least, loves that vent loves where the water comes out even in loves it to help him shed he goes he sits on it sheds it pushes his skin off he'll lay right on top of it he'll lay under it it's really good i hope i've answered some questions on what the enclosure needs to be and why which is key because it's not that one is right or wrong no water water there are just certain steps that you have to do both can be done correctly, and both can get you a, a giant, healthy pixie frog. You just have to do two different things. One last thing. Heat control. So, I have, just in case, you know that there's the heating pad underneath that gets that area nice and warm. If he were to ever get sick or I, I notice that maybe he's acting cold or warm and I need to adjust the temperature, I have ceramic heat emitter up in there, not turned on right now, that if I need to be able to control the temperature of his enclosure more because I leave it open lid because I like to look down and see him, I can turn it on. I can drop it down, I can raise it up, I, it can really help me control the temperature, which is really good. So there's that. Now, we're back to him while he's eating. Let's see if we can get him to eat more. Um, oh, he's only got three left, wow, he's being a pig. 
So typically when you feed the pixie frog, you want to take him out of his main tank. And there's a few reasons for that. One goes back to that impaction we talked about. If you put him in a feeder tank, you don't have to worry about him sucking in too much substrate when he's eating. That's, that, that's probably the biggest one. But the other one is everyone's afraid of putting their hand in front of their pixie frog. It's going to bite their hand off. They're afraid of petting him. It's going to kill the frog, the oils. None of that, none of that is n instinctively true and it can be changed. So if your hands are clean and you've washed your hands, they're not all oily, they're not covered in bleach for God's sakes, you can come in, you can pet your pixie frog, it's fine. If you always feed him in here and he's not used to being hand picked up or hand pet, in here he'll be in his hunting mode, but he'll be always more calm in his main stay. Therefore, you don't have to worry about putting your hands in front of them. Now, the other thing is I talked about when I was showing you his enclosure about soaking him. So after I feed my pixie frog, I like to give him a soak. Now, this provides a few things. One is if I have to clean his enclosure, change substrate, change the water, since I feed him once a week, this gives me an excuse to put him in this tank, let him eat, and then let him soak. If you look at him now, he is pretty shiny and he's pretty smooth. He doesn't have a lot of wrinkles, right? So he's full of all his old water. That's probably how, you know, one of the things that makes him awake. So when I give him a nice little bath, throw some water in here. There we go, just a little bit on me. He's going to do a few things. One is, give me more time to clean the enclosure, which is really important. But two, this is a nice, you know, clean water. Yeah, there's some, some eco-earth in it, but that's going to allow him, see, see the position he's taken, and you'll start to see wrinkles appear and all that. It's going to allow him to just pee out all of that old water. So you'll, he'll start to get wrinkly really quickly. Yeah, they're already appearing. So he's, you know, he's got his butt down, he's in the position here, he's going to pee out all his old water into here. So I typically will pour in some water like this and I'll let him soak for about eh, 10 minutes. That's enough time to let him pee out all his old dirty water, everything like that. And then I'll come back and I'll take him out and I'll put in, I'll flush this out and I'll put in new water which will allow him to absorb and soak in it. And it's a little bit warmer than his normal enclosure water, which will just help him digest. But that will allow him to suck up some new clean water. So that buys me time, and it helps him flush his system, which is really important. So when your pixie frog is full of water, they're obviously going to be fat. They're going to have a lot of extra, you know, body. It's going to, his skin's going to fold over, and he's going to be really smooth. When he, when he sits here and he's either dehydrated or he's peeing it out, you're going to see all these wrinkles appear because he's going to be getting rid of all that water. And a lot of times people will get pixie frogs and they're like, oh, they're just obese. They're not really obese. They're just full of water. You know, they can go underground for two years and not eat or drink because they're so full of water. I hope I've answered a lot of questions for you guys. If you get more... Oh, he's swimming. Wanted to clean his face off there. If you guys have other questions on reptiles, let me know. You know I love to make videos, but you know I love to help educate, and I love to tell people how easy reptiles are, and at least let them understand what they do. Take care, guys. Have a great day.